Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, can place flowers. Now this is marked as an easy, but I definitely feel that this problem is more of a medium question. So we're given a flower bed and each position in this flower bed can either have a planted flower or it can be empty. And in this flower bed, we're not allowed to put any flowers adjacent to each other. A zero in this case represents an empty position and a one represents a flower. As the input, we're of course given the flower bed and we're given an integer n. And we want to know, can we place n flowers in this flower bed? If we can, we return true. If we can't, we return false. And we have to, of course, do this without violating the no adjacent flowers rule. So in this first example, you can see we have three empty spots here. So all we want to do is, is place one flower. Of course, we can't place it here because it'll be next to a one. We can't place it here because it'll be next to a different flower. But if we place it right in the middle, it will not be next to any flowers because these two spots are empty. So we're allowed to do that. In this case, we want to place two flowers, though, and we can't do that because we know that this is the the only place we can put a flower and we don't have any other places so we return false because we can't do it now let's really understand this problem and i think the difficult part about it is the edge cases and there's one important edge case we are going to go over so let's start with a few examples. The simple example is if we just had one contiguous empty spot. We know we cannot place a flower here because it's it's uh, the boundaries are uh, flowers, right? We can't put it next to any flowers. So a single contiguous empty spot does not uh, allow us to put a flower. What if we have two contiguous empty spots? That's not enough either because this is next to a flower and this is next to a flower, so we don't have uh, any room to put a flower. But we know three contiguous empty spots is enough to place a flower. We have three contiguous spots. If we place the flower right in the middle, that's enough for us because next to it are empty spots. So we're allowed to do that. So at this point, you might think you have the entire algorithm figured out. But there's one edge case that you have to be careful of. What if the beginning of the entire flower bed does not start with a one? Because remember, the problem with all three of these examples is these contiguous empty spots are bounded by flowers. But this one, you can see, it has a flower on the right side, but there's no flower on the left side. Does that change anything for us? It does, because we had originally thought that two contiguous uh, empty spots could not contain a flower. But in this spot, in this example, we see that we can definitely put a flower over here because this is an empty spot. And over here, as far as we're concerned, there's nothing there. It's practically, the, edge, the edges of this array are practically... Uh, we can think of them as being empty spots, right? Now, and that's okay for us to think of it as putting empty spots on the left and right because it doesn't change the previous examples up above, right? If we put a zero here and here, it doesn't change anything because we can't put a flower here no matter what we do because we know there's a one here and we can't put a flower here because we know there's a one here. And even in this example below, just because we have here, we assume there's a zero here and we have three contiguous zeros, doesn't mean we're ever going to actually put a flower here. We're always going to put it in the middle. So we're pretty much safe to assume that there are two empty spots on the edges of this array. And that assumption is very important and will basically make this problem really easy to solve. The only downside is, uh, you know, if we do this, the overall space complexity is going to become O of N because we're technically modifying the input array and actually creating a new array like this. Uh, but there actually is a way to solve this problem using the exact same idea I'm talking about here, assuming that there's a zero at the beginning and the end. But you can do it in constant memory. Uh, and the overall time complexity of this is actually going to be big O of n because I'm going to show you how to do this by just doing a single linear pass through this algorithm. Uh, and actually, real quick before I even get into the algorithm, uh, what if we, you know, we, we assumed here we looked at if we didn't have a left boundary, but it's possible we couldn't have a right boundary either. What if we change this to a zero? In this case, we can actually place two flowers here, right? A one, a flower here and a flower here. So, you know, originally over here, we thought we could only place one flower in three contiguous empty spots, but here we placed two flowers in three contiguous empty spots because we're assuming that there's a zero here and a zero here. So pretty much this is actually as if there were five contiguous empty spots. Okay, but what's the actual algorithm? 
Well, like I said, we're gonna, you know, pretend like there's a zero here and here. We're gonna, you know, create a new array that looks like this. And then we're gonna iterate through the original values of the array because we're never actually gonna be putting a flower here or a flower here. We're only gonna be trying to put a flower here or here or here, right? In the real values of the array. So I is gonna be a pointer starting here and it's gonna iterate through the entire array. And what we're gonna look at is if this spot, the spot that we're at is empty and the spot to the left is empty and the spot to the right is empty, then what are we gonna do? We're gonna plant a flower right here. So in this case, we put a flower here. Next, we go to the next position. You know, this is empty, but of course this is not empty and this is not empty, so we can't put a flower here. We do the exact same thing here. Uh, this is not empty, uh, so we can't put a flower here, even though the left spot and the right spot were empty. But suppose this was empty, then we'd say, okay, this is empty, this is empty, and this is empty. So we can also plant a flower here. Uh, and then in that case, in this example, we found we could plant two flowers, one here and one here. So for example, if n was two and they were asking, can we plant two flowers? We return true. Uh, if n was even bigger than that, if n was three, we'd say false because we can't plant three flowers. We can only plant two flowers. So that's the main idea. First, let me show you how we can solve the problem with a little bit of extra memory. Okay, so now let's code it up. And like I said, we're gonna take the input flower bed and basically just add a zero to the beginning and a zero to the end. We can do that in Python pretty easily like this, just kind of adding another array to an array, uh, pretty uh, handy for us in Python. So after doing that, we are gonna iterate through the array, but we remember we're gonna skip the first index and the last index as we iterate through. So we're gonna start at index one and we're gonna uh, skip the last index of the flower bed. So we can do that like this in Python. Okay, and now the uh, basic condition we're gonna check is are three contiguous spots empty? So is the previous spot empty at i minus one? Is it uh, equal to zero? And is the value at index i also equal to zero? And is uh, the next position at i plus one also equal to zero? If all of that's true, we know we can plant a flower here and we're actually going to do that. We are going to modify the array and plant a flower. So we're gonna say i is gonna be set now to one. And since we planted a flower and we want to know, can we plant n flowers, what are we going to do? Uh, you, could, you could keep track of a separate variable or we could just modify n itself. We could just decrement n. And then, you know, that's the main logic of the algorithm. After we have done all the flower plantings that we can, at the end, we can check is n less than or equal to zero, meaning we planted all the flowers that we needed to. If it is, we return true. If it's not, we return false. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. But you can use the same idea of assuming that there's an empty spot at the beginning and at the end. I'll show you what the code would look like if you are curious and walk through it just a little bit. So here you can see that rather than, you know, checking the three contiguous spots, if they're empty, we're kind of just keeping track uh, using a variable called empty, how many contiguous empty spots we saw. Now, uh, initially we're gonna set empty equal to zero if the first position in the flower bed has a flower. But if it doesn't have a flower, then we're setting it to one. You can kind of see that that's the same idea we're using up above. And then we iterate through every flower in the original flower bed, not you know a modified array. And if we do see a flower, and if we do finally reach a flower, then we're basically gonna calculate how many flowers we could have planted in the, you know, how many empty spaces we originally had. Now, this kind of math here that I'm doing is kind of required in Python if you wanna round towards zero, because, you know, if empty is zero, uh, then we'll have a negative one. And the, you know, if you divide a negative number by two, it'll actually round down, which is not what we want in Java and other languages. Most languages, it'll round towards zero, but in Python it doesn't do that. So what we're doing here is just kind of rounding it towards zero. And then uh, however many flowers we can plant, we're gonna decrement n by that number and then reset empty back to zero. Uh, if it's, not, if it is an empty, and that's if the flower was uh, a real flower, but if it, the else condition, if it was an empty position, then we just increment empty by one. And at the end, we have to do one last thing. If the last flower 
uh, was empty, then we potentially have to add the total number of flowers. Uh, and the reason you can see up here I had a minus one and here we didn't have a minus one is because remember we're assuming that there's one last flower, uh, an empty position at the end of the flower bed and that's uh, what we're using in this calculation. Uh, this is probably a little bit too complicated if you're a beginner, but I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon if you'd like to further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.